So in this third video of this three video series on compositing, layering things up, working with some of the built-in tools in Final Cut Pro 10, and also introducing some things like the Cineflare Gradients plugin, we're gonna be having a look at how we work with hand-drawn sketches to composite video together. And we can get some really nice, interesting, kind of grainy effects happening. So first of all, we're just gonna explain the fundamentals of how this technique works. So we can use the black and white of an image to make transparency in our videos. So we're gonna grab, first of all, a drawing from here. So we'll grab this drawing. And basically the way this works is that we make transparency in the drawing and then we borrow that transparency for our video. So we'll stretch this out a little bit and I'm gonna do Shift and Z just to zoom to the entire timeline. And now before we move on with this, I just wanna thank FX Factory for sponsoring this video and the other kind of two videos in the series. And they're an awesome place to kind of go and find plugins for Final Cut Pro 10. You can try all the plugins out on their website for free. Um, so you can install the FX Factory app and then kind of test out any of the plugins that we've used in this series and other series of videos. So we've got our fantastic hand-drawn sketch. I'm gonna come up to the top right and just take off the spatial conform in my inspector. If you don't see the inspector, just go to Window, Show in Workspace, and make sure you can see the inspector checked there. You should see it across here on the right. I'm just gonna move this bigger kind of mark of pen into the middle here. And we're gonna do a couple of things with this drawing. The first thing is we're gonna come up to the inspector and just change the saturation and drop it all the way down. And then I'm gonna just modify the exposure a little bit. So I wanna drop the darker areas of the image down and then brighten up the, the kind of white Areas the image. That's looking pretty good. And we can also add on here as well a color curves, which will allow us to do a similar thing. So we can push up the whites and then drop down those blacks and we can get a nice level of control here. And what we're really looking for is to kind of try and keep as much detail around the edges as, as possible. Okay, so the background here is looking pretty nice and clean and white. So we're gonna come up to our video here and we're gonna work with these uh, two videos, basically because the kind of movement of the camera is sort of similar. So we've got one image of this lady without the mask and then one image of her with the mask and we're gonna kind of juxtapose between the both of them. So we're gonna grab these two video layers now, layer them up and basically for this layer, I'm just gonna drop down the opacity so we can see them one on top of the other. And you can see with this top layer, we need to increase the size of it. So I'm gonna try and match the size and position of her head with the image in the background. And we're just doing this reasonably roughly. So if we just turn that up now, maybe a bit too big. So we'll just bring this back a little bit. So we're moving around there. And that's pretty good. So we've got a little bit of matching of the movement. Um, we don't need it to be perfect. And we'll just use Alt and the right square bracket at the end there just to trim it down and then we'll snap those so they're all the same length. So with this black and white layer, the first thing we're gonna do is just hold down the Alt key and duplicate it up above this topmost layer. And I'm gonna trim it down so it's around about this length. So basically here now, if we drop down the opacity of this layer, we're gonna try and match up the position of this mark here with her eyes. Okay. And what we're gonna do is add a key on this layer, so a Luma key which will make transparency in this layer. So if I come to my keying here in the effects so across the right, jump into your effects, go into keying, we're gonna grab the Luma key, And when we drop that on, you can see we're seeing her eyes now here in this image. So basically we have, for this layer now, we've keyed out the black. So the black where her eyes are, is basically removed from this kind of black and white image. And actually for this purpose, I wanna invert that. I want the black to be visible and the rest of the image to be invisible. And then what I need to do is scroll down a little bit to my compositing options here and select stencil alpha. Now what that's gonna do is it's gonna put my video um, inside that area here. And actually you can see that I need to modify this a little bit. So I'm gonna tweak the Luma up here 
from the right just so that we're knocking out that black. So basically this is knocking out all these layers. So we're getting transparency in this layer, this layer, this layer, and this layer. So we're not revealing those layers behind. And what we need to do to do that is select these two layers and right click and make them into a new compound clip or Alt and G. And then if we click OK, now you can see we see the eyes of the lady in the first image and then the kind of mask and everything of the lady in the background image. So we've composited those two images together. So you can see here now we've basically got this image with transparency. So now I'm going to hold down Alt and drag this up. And we're going to do the opposite. So I'm going to do the same effects here. So I've got the same black and white layer here. I'm going to add the Lumic here. I'm going to leave this visible for this example. So basically it's going to be the, the reverse of this. And so now when I come to composite, to stencil my alpha, it's going to reveal the, the reverse of that. So if I tap V again and turn this top layer on, you can see basically we're, we've got transparency. Let's turn this background off between these two layers. Okay, so we're kind of compositing them together. Again, with these top two layers here, the second and third layer, I'm going to right click and or Option and G and turn them into a compound clip. And so what we've got here is pretty fun, um, but we can do a lot more here. So I'm just going to tap V again to kind of enable that background layer. And on here, we'll come to our Cineflare gradient and we'll just drag kind of basic gradient on there. And we'll see that starting to show up in some spots there. So where there's transparency for both of those images, we'll see that in there. So I'm going to click here, change this to orange. We'll change this other green to orange as well. And we'll change this yellow. We'll go for a magenta here. Okay, so that's starting to look nice and fun. So basically now we've got these two images and we want to kind of play around with them a little bit. So I'm going to double click into this top image. And basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to break this up. Okay, so I'm going to zoom in on my timeline a little bit and I'm going to take six or seven frames. So I'm going to use my blade tool. I'm going to come here and grab my blade tool, slice here, come ahead to this next section. And what we're going to do here is with my selection tool, I'm going to select this second clip and I'm going to invert it. So basically it's going to flip to the opposite of this now. So you can see now we flip between those two. Actually, I might just try and come into my color correction here and try and drop down this black just a little bit more. Do the same here. Just so we're getting a bit better contrast there. Okay. So you can see now we're flipping between those two. And it doesn't look like much yet. But I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit. I'm going to delete this. And we're going to copy these two. So I'm going to highlight these two, copy them, and then move along the timeline, paste them in, and we'll copy them again, and we'll paste them in. And then we'll just kind of keep going until we reach the end. So I'm going to zoom out of my timeline here. So Command and Minus, and we'll select all these, copy them, paste them in, paste them in. It doesn't matter if we go beyond the end here. Then we'll come back. So now you can see we play this through, we're flipping between the eyes and the mouth of the person in the background. Okay, so if we come into this layer below, double click in here, and do the same thing. I'm going to zoom in, 
I'm going to come a few frames in. We'll blade this, B for the blade tool. Oh, actually, before we do that, I'm just going to undo that. We'll just increase this contrast here a little bit so we get that kind of nice heavy contrast between these layers. So once we've tweaked that, we're going to come to our blade tool, add a couple of slices here, come back to our selection tool, delete this last clip, and then just alternate this. So we will go the same alternation, and then we'll paste these in. And come back. So you can see now if we play this through, we get this nice flipping of the image occasionally mixed in with that gradient because we have transparency in both and they're kind of offsetting against one another. So we can play around with the speed of this animation. We could also play with the, the colors of our gradient uh, in the background. Um, perhaps if we take this background image here and change the blend mode to multiply, we're going to get a bit more accentuation of this effect. So you can see we'll do a couple of things here. So if we jump in here, I'm going to select all of these clips on the top layer here. I'm going to do Command and G, which is going to group them into a connected clip. And then I'm just going to grab a few of these and do Control and D, and I'm going to shorten them a bit. So I'm going to do minus two, select a couple of these, Control and D, minus three, Select a couple more of these, Control and D, plus four, Control, select these, Control and D, minus four. And so what you can see is happening here is I'm basically alternating the kind of rhythm of these. So I'm changing the, the kind of flash speed uh, without getting too strobe-like. So we can kind of alternate the, the speed of these that will kind of give us a nice variation. And then if we come back, we'll come into this clip as well, and we'll select all of these, do Command and G, and then we'll just play around with the speed of some of these as well. So select them all, Control and D, and three, that's gonna make them super fast. Select all these, Control and D, and six. Select a few of these, Control and D, and four. Select some of these, Control and D, and three. And let's just grab that one. Okay, so we'll grab some of these quicker ones and just duplicate them down here by holding down the Alt key. Okay, so let's have a playback of this. We've got like a little bit of a more flashing, so it's a bit more quick in some spots. Let's go back. And I'm gonna just change my blend mode here to linear burn. And we'll just trim this from the beginning. So let's play this back. So you can see with this technique, there's a lot of creative possibilities, whether you just wanna put a graphic or a video into something that you've hand drawn where you can kind of bump the contrast and make it black and white and then place that video or image within that to these kind of more complex composites where we're actually starting to animate those layers and getting them to push and pull against one another. So hopefully this is a useful overview of how we can create transparency using hand-drawn images in Final Cut Pro 10. If you have any questions about this or the other two tutorials in this series, then please don't hesitate to leave a comment below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.